While it is true that India must take more steps to liberalize its external sector, it can be no one's serious argument that the lack of flight connections between Delhi and Lahore, the visa regime operating between the two countries, or India's quality and safety certification procedures that are accepted all around the world are in some way aimed at creating a regime of non-tariff barriers against Pakistan-made goods. India remains ready to move ahead on the bilateral trade agenda. However, it also needs to be understood that a necessary prerequisite for dynamic economic activity between our two countries is an environment free from terror and violence. Trade and terrorism are incompatible. The challenge is to create an environment where we can focus on the trade and the economic agenda and work towards growing connectivity and linkages between our two economies. It is our hope that we can, at some point, reach this objective. The question is when. Time will tell. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Singh, uh, for, for your address. Uh, this brings us uh, to the conclusion of, a, I think, a fascinating two days uh, uh, here. I remember yesterday we started uh, with uh, Mr. Chadha uh, striking a very emotional note and uh, with the Commerce Secretary you know, bringing a sense of realism into the discussion. And we've had, you know, two days of very fascinating uh, discussion, scholarly, with a lot of uh, practical insights on how to move forward. And, uh, you know, a project of this size, which has completed its halfway mark, we have another 18 months to go in this project, has obviously collected many debts along the way and will continue to collect many more debts uh, in the next 18 months that uh, this will continue. This project, as I said yesterday, commenced in August 2012 and has achieved several milestones, which I'm not going to talk about, which I mentioned yesterday. Some of those milestones you will see on the separate website, the separate portal that has been created uh, for this purpose. And there are a number of uh, research papers, number of uh, kind of a lot of data that the team has collected from primary surveys as well as the secondary data that is all on the website. And I encourage those of you who are interested in the subject to, to have a look at that. Uh, we cannot possibly thank everybody who's been associated with this project. I mean, it's, as I said, 18 months is a long time, another 18 months to go. Uh, there have been people at the border, so to say, metaphorically, and there have been people behind the border. Uh, and the behind the border team is sitting at the back uh, and they've interacted with you, but they've been enormous help in getting not only this event together, but putting together a project of this size uh, into you know, the process that it's uh, going through. Uh, I'm going to name all the people uh, from, from our, uh, across the border, I'm going to, but I'll miss out many. So I apologize in advance for the names that I miss out. From Pakistan, we've enjoyed the support and continue to enjoy, enjoy the support of all the institutions, uh, SDPI, LUMS, uh, and IBA, uh, and from individuals. Abid Suleri, th this is in alphabetical order. Right? Abid Suleri, Akdas, Kazmi, Athir, Ilahi, Ijaz, Nabi, Manzoor Ahmed, Suhail Ahmed, Sayyid, Samir Amir, Sayyid Tub Turab Hussain, Sayyid Yawar Ali, Tariq Butcha, Usman Khan, Wakar Ahmed, and Zafar Mahmood Sab. Uh, thank you all from Bangladesh. Salim Rehan is here, who presented yesterday, and from India, a host of people. I think I can skip 
uh, the Indians as hosts, they know who I'm talking about. There are many of them and you've been interacting with them uh, uh, over the last two days. Uh, the team members from, from ICREAR, I named them yesterday, but met, let me repeat because they've been you know, intensively involved in this process. Nisha, of course, all of you know, Sanjana, who's sitting at the back. Sanjana, would you? Uh, yeah, Sanjana Joshi, Gurpreet Bhatia, Samriddhi Bimal, uh, Isha Dayal, Devyani Pandey, Radhika Saini have all been involved in this project. We had for the first time, as I had mentioned yesterday, volunteers from Delhi University who were so overwhelmed by the hospitality that they enjoyed in Lahore when they were there that they decided to reciprocate and come here and also be rapporteurs. So the notes that you will see on our website would have been initially drafted by the volunteers from uh, Delhi University, Jatin Bhavishi, Manas Pathak, Anuvinda P. Ishneet Kaur. And then, of course, I graciously thank the speakers uh, in the special session, not uh, in the last session, but not the least, Ms. Sujata Singh, Rajiv Kher, who was here at the opening yesterday, Mr. G.K. Chadha, professor, who gave a very emotional uh, opening uh, address, Ishrat Usain, who's been involved in this process, uh, who's delivered the uh, distinguished lecture. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here at, till the conclusion because he had to leave for uh, Davos last night, and Mr. Uh, former Ambassador Sharad Savarwal, who gave uh, uh, the luncheon address uh, today. Uh, the media, the audience have always been engaged in process. Of course, anything, uh, even beyond cricket, India-Pakistan excites a lot of attention and therefore a lot of engagement. So thank you to all of you from the odd uh, who have participated uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this event. And of course the media who has reported this event in the papers today uh, quite extensively, despite there being competition uh, to this event with another career event which was held yesterday. So uh, both those events have been uh, reported in the media despite the competition. Let me, before you know, I conclude, let me you know, some of the things that were said uh, and, and what we see as the way ahead. Uh, the, the kind of, the genesis of ICRIA as a research institution happened in uh, 1981. And the rationale for that genesis was to provide, I guess, a solid evidence-based policy for the establishment to be able to take informed decision on policy. So that, you know, you didn't just take policy decisions based on what you felt, but rather it was based on evidence. Since policy change, as you all know, takes a lot of time, and if it does happen at all, a lot of people ask me, you know, what policy has ICRIA been able to influence? Can you provide evidence for that? I don't know whether, you know, you can actually pinpoint which policy ICRIA has been able to to influence, one that comes very quickly to mind is change the policy discourse around uh, certain uh, areas. And that is what we are trying to do uh, in not only this project, but other projects is attempting to change the policy discourse, which there's a lot of negativism around the policy discourse. So we change the nature of that discourse and the benefits also that, that one is able to, to garner from that. And of course, look at, because we are researchers, also look at the distributional impact of those, how those dis uh, impacts, uh, uh, how those benefits are distributed, and what are the, the forces that are trying to block any change. But going back to the genesis, you know, uh, policy uh, research or evidence-based research and policy change, uh, they take a lot of time. And the reason I'm saying this is because at the genesis in 1981, Although I wasn't there in 1981, I've looked at the past uh, uh, kind of research that ICRIA has done. It started as a research institution that almost anticipated India's engagement and strategic relations with the world economy. But it was only 10 years later that I India actually liberalized in 1991. So in 1981, ICRIA was able to anticipate uh, and that was the genesis that India will eventually have to integrate and what would it mean for India if it integrated into the world economy. And there was a lot of knowledge that was built up already between those 10 years. And I'm sure uh, uh, ICRIA's influence in the policy discourse during those 10 years, during that decade, between 1981 and when eventually it happened, I'm sure uh, the, the then finance minister, 
who has been associated with ICRIA, also I'm not going to name him, but the then finance minister uh, was a part of ICRIA, and some of the learning must have been in the consciousness, or at least in the subconsciousness, when policy decisions were taken. So, uh, and that is exactly what we are hoping to do with this project uh, that we have engaged in. It's a three-year project. And I think from what I heard from everybody around and what we heard, that now we've done that for goods. Uh, we've, we've created an environment, we've created a regime where there is consciousness about the need to move forward, the road ahead, and some excellent suggestions. And I was speaking with Zafar Sahab uh, during the lunch break, and he had some wonderful ideas, as he gave another patented ideas, unpatented ideas of his to Nisha. So, uh, you know, the small country being magnanimous and showing unilateral liberalization, maybe India can do the same thing as the big country. But some ideas have come up on what we can do, because this has happened now, uh, trade in goods, and this research will conclude in 18 months, but we can't leave it. We have to continue doing it, and uh, uh, we need to carry the baton forward. We need to keep this uh, process moving, and ICRIA will continue to pro provide a platform for engagement on Indo-Pakistan uh, relations. So a number of ideas have come up. We'll probably go back to the drawing board, try and formulate some of them, you know, came up in the last session as well. Uh, look at Indo-Pak relations, not at just bilateral relations, but in the context of larger regional uh, uh, ties or larger, you know, global ties. For example, look at value chains. Is it possible to establish value chains? Look at services trade. So there are lots of things that we can, you know, continue the engagement with, and we, and we promise that uh, we will uh, continue this pro and take this process uh, forward. Uh, there are, so, you know, whatever the future is, whatever happens, whatever kind of area we choose to do research on, one thing is sure that ICRIA will continue to provide uh, a platform for engagement on Indo-Pak uh, Indo uh, policy form, for sensible policy formulation uh, in the future. Uh, lastly, let me say that uh, the, there has been a team beyond the people that I have mentioned, which is the events team uh, of ICRIA that also organize, helps in organizing the events. They're not here, but they would be outside. I see one of them here, but there are many of them uh, outside Manmeet and the entire team. They've you know, uh, literally burnt the midnight oil. Rajkumar here, who is the, the computer man, uh, always the Harfan Mola, as they say, he can solve all your computer-related problems if you have any. Uh, they've been working uh, very hard to ensure the success of an event uh, such as this. So the entire events team, Manmeet, uh, Kishan, Neha, all the others, uh, a big thank you uh, from all of us. And lastly, uh, this project would not have seen the kind of success had it been not for the devoted efforts of, uh, of Nisha and the team. So Nisha, thank you very much. It's, uh, uh, I think, as I had said yesterday, uh, of all the projects that ICRIA has done in its 30-year history, uh, this project has perhaps been one which has enjoyed uh, the maximum uh, kind of influence, a lot of coverage, and a lot of attention from all stakeholders. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, uh, Foreign Secretary Sujata Singh, for coming to our uh, valedictory session. It, it, it provided, I think, the proverbial icing on the cake of this very successful, I think, conference. Thank you all very much.